All signs point to this in Edmonton regarding the McDry duo and if they're going to stay together in Edmonton for the long-term future. All that and more today on Oilers Digest. We also have some Jersey talk, but we'll get into that uh, later on in the video. But make sure to subscribe here to Oilers Digest. We are, we are oh so close to 1,800 subscribers, 14 exactly. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining us along the ride here as we get into the rest of the offseason. It's day by day. The clock is slowly ticking until the Oilers' first preseason game on the 27th or the rookie tournament in Penticton starting this Friday. But without further ado, McStaying, yes, there was some talk with Elliot Friedman last week on the 32 Thoughts, the podcast with Kyle Bogoskas, his new uh, co-host there instead of Jeff Merrick. He had this to say about uh, the duo. With Jarrett Settle now signed, it is all but a slam dunk that Connor McDavid follows suit a year from now. He says, I think McDavid is staying. You don't think that Leon Drassel knows exactly what Connor McDavid is thinking. He knows what Connor McDavid is thinking. This was not a Leon Drassel negotiation. This was a Leon Drassel in Connor McDavid negotiation. Now, everyone, that's probably the worst kept secret in Edmonton. Uh, why it took so long there to sort of, you know, to get McDavid and Drassel uh, on the same page. But it's been quite a while since they were off the same page in Edmonton. He also added on with, those guys are so close. Drassel just bought home not far from McDavid's offseason home just so they could live and train together they're so tight I find it really hard to believe that draw settle wouldn't commit to this without a really good understanding that McDavid is going to do it too and again it's it's pretty much all all public knowledge I mean draw settle and McDavid for the better part of almost uh, eight years now uh, connected off and on the ice together. I mean, they spend summer vacations together. They do pretty much everything together. I mean, even during uh, the All-Star break there, they were together. It's pretty hard to find them apart there. Uh, again, off and on the ice. So to say this was a dry settle and Connor uh, negotiation, uh, absolutely, a 100%. Of course, you know, dry settle, there would be uh, no hesitation uh, to go elsewhere if McDavid thought he wasn't staying. But uh, together again, and then the McDavid uh, extension, that that is, uh, that is a worry for next summer. A key takeaway from Friedman's analysis is that teams must pay their star players what they're worth to remain competitive in today's NHL. So you can't exactly give you know your star player uh, a, a huge pay cut because, of course, the NHL PA will get involved in that because, you know, they want their guys to get paid. However, success hinges on finding complementary pieces to surround those stars. We'll get into that a little bit later with the, the roster build of the Oilers. And the Oilers have committed to dress settle, and now they'll need to navigate the challenge of keeping McDavid while still building a roster capable of contending for the Stanley Cup. Of course, that was something uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins sort of fell into that trap of, you know, mortgaging the future and stripping the cupboards bare to make sure they still had um, a contending team for years to come. And it still seems like they kind of do, even in the twilight of Latang, Malkin, and Crosby's career. Uh, they were never not a threat from the time, you know, those two were a stellar duo from 2007 up until today. So uh, it has been done before, of course, a bit of an outlier, but it has been, uh, of course, been done before. And everyone was asking, you know, the difference between uh, uh, the Oilers and the Maple Leafs, because, of course, both teams are uh, putting a huge amount of money into a small number of guys. And Freeman uh, did highlight a key difference between the Oilers and Maple Leafs, of course, those two fan bases. Uh, uh, comparison is the only thing I can describe. <laughs> you know, one team goes after another and the other, uh, the exact same there. He, he noted a few key differences or one key difference, I should say. Uh, regarding Toronto and Edmonton, regarding signing high-value players in their recent signings, he noted that the Oilers have been more strategic in keeping a certain player at lower salaries than they might have commanded uh, elsewhere, uh, a guy like Adam Henrique or Jeff Skinner or even Victor Arvidsson. This approach has given the Oilers more flexibility in managing their salary cap while locking up their star players like Dreisaitl. And Friedman also implies there's no number the Oilers won't consider for McDavid's extension, which, again, kind of goes without saying. McDavid, you can hand the guy a blank check, and he's worth exactly that. He says if McDavid asks for 20% of the salary cap, the maximum allowed by the CBA, they would give it to him. With McDavid's free agency still two years away, it's difficult to predict what the salary cap will look like when his new contract kicks in, because, of course, uh, the salary cap uh, raise, it uh, it just kind of seems like Gary Bettman and his uh, his his 
you know, band just kind of roll the dice and say, okay, this is how much it's going up by. With Jurassic Idol's cap hit at $14 million, a $15 million cap hit for McDavid would make sense, of course, in another video. Uh, last week, I went over the 16, 14, and 10 plan regarding Jurassic Idol, McDavid, and Bouchard. Uh, check that one out if you want. Um, but... 50 million, I mean, even that would just be a bargain for McDavid. That would add up to 120 million over eight years. The second most lucrative contract in NHL history. If McDavid really wants to make history, a 15 and a half million cap hit would make a $124 million contract, tying Alex Ovechkin for the biggest contract ever. And I think he will uh, smash that quite easily. And Friedman concluded on the podcast by reflecting uh, on how unforeseen events like the COVID-19 pandemic can disrupt even the best laid plans, as it did with Toronto. But barring any unexpected challenges, he believes the Oilers should be able to manage their situation, ensuring both Jurassic Settle and McDavid are compensated appropriately while still fielding uh, a very competitive team and of course you know with the Oilers that would just be their luck to have something like this happen <laughs> yet again across the NHL of course they seem to can't catch anything um but yeah uh the, the plan the Oilers they do have a plan um how you know how are they going to stick to it uh remains to be seen but we'll uh, we'll take a look at the Oilers um because Friedman did mention that they you know are trying to keep their team competitive by you know giving uh I don't want to say like uh, cheap contracts, but still pretty uh, pretty lucrative contracts because you can see they're Adam Henrique at uh, at three million, uh, Corey Perry at a bit of a bargain contract, even though he's very old. Connor Brown at a million, uh, Vasily Pod Colson, who's sort of a gamble. Uh, James Amblin still uh, on the a league minimum contract there, and a lot of other smaller pieces there just kind of fills out the lineup. Victor Arvidsson at four million, Zach Hyman. Uh, absolute steal at the beginning everyone thought that was an overpay but if anything it's an underpay by the way he's playing even though um most people say all he does is tapping goals uh well uh no <laughs> uh zach hyman steal of contract the only one that's sort of you know kind of iffy on the offensive side of the puck is evander kane but again ltir will sort of help out the team as they you know accrue the cap space uh to sort of hopefully go go for something at the trade deadline but oiler fans rest assured uh friedman believes the oilers in mcdavid will get something done i believe the oilers in mcdavid will get something done it all it's all a matter of time until pen is put to paper and Lastly here, addressing the issue. Yes, there's been uh, uh, some dark, dark news regarding the Edmonton Oilers uh, uniform. Of course, you know, you might say, okay, that might seem like a bit of a hyperbole. Uh, well... Uh, yeah, uh, two years ago, this was from Tom Rizzola, who's pretty connected within the Oilers Media Network. He says, as of now, which was September uh, September 6, 2022, which is almost uh, two years ago to the day, uh, he said, as of now, here, no sponsors on the jerseys for the season. This could change. Uh, well, and it did. And wrote helmets will have a sponsor on them, but not home helmets, of course. Um, in the 2021 um, shortened Canadian season, I do believe they had something like Skip the Dishes on their... Um, on their helmets, and then they had either Rogers or Play Alberta. Again, I don't really care about the advertisements, so I don't really, you know, bother to remember them. But, uh, yeah, yeah, there we have it, folks. Uh, it's only on the home jersey. Play Alberta, uh, in the Oilers extended their partnership. Of course, Play Alberta was on the Oilers helmets as the ad, and now it's on the home jersey. Take a, take a good look at that here, folks. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers and Play Alberta announced a new agreement today that makes Play Alberta the exclusive sports betting and online gaming partner of the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, they just kind of shoehorn the, the the betting and gambling part into that when really it's as destructive as it sounds. Uh, the deal will see the Play Alberta logo featured prominently on the Oilers' home jerseys in Game Sense. Uh, something to do about their uh, gambling program displayed on the helmets of the Oilers for each home game, and then just some uh, uh, corporate. Uh, t- Corporate talk here. Play Alberta is proud to continue its partnership with the Oilers over the next several seasons. Um, and uh, nobody really cares about that. I mean, ads on jerseys, especially the Oilers. Uh, it's sort of, it's just desecrating the uniform. I mean, money, money talks, but I mean, for the history of the Oilers, that you know, that orange and blue, it's been classic. You see, you know, Gretzky, Curry, that area carried into you know the McDavid and Dry Settle. I mean, it's a, it's a timeless uniform. And to throw an advertisement on it is just, uh, just plain wrong. Uh, you can see their NHL advertisements on jerseys have been um, a very noticeable theme. Even five out of the six original six teams have donned uh, a uniform ad. Of course, 
five out of those six teams. Uh, you know, the original six is, you know, the most um, historic group of franchises in the NHL. And, uh, yeah, they have ads on their uniforms. Of course, the Rangers, uh, the only original six team not to have any ad on their uniform. Um, and that is just the most egregious one. I mean, the Blue Blanc A Rouge of the Montreal Canadiens being adorned by an RBC ad. That is just every one of your nightmares come to true. <laughs> It's just, uh, yeah, advertisements on jerseys, uh, a sad day when it comes to, you know, watching your team. Of course, you know, any historic moment by McDavid, you'll see that Play Alberta logo on on the chest there. Uh, and Andrew Andrew C. at AOD Games says, gambling sponsor for all those young children that will tune in to watch Connor play. Get them young. I assume burgers will still be $90 as well. I mean, that just kind of sums it up there. Uh, when it comes to uh, how much, you know, NHL teams make, I mean, for, for Daryl Cates, he said, uh, he mentioned a few years back, I mean, the Oilers uniform, very historic, so you don't really want to desecrate it, and then he did, uh, for frame of reference, the Capitals' partnership with Capital One uh, for naming rights to the team's arena is reportedly worth $10 million, but uh, jersey ads, they kind of vary in between 5 to $10 million annually from their jersey ad deals, according to the uh, chief business officer, Keith Wachtel of the NHL. He says, you know, every deal is going to be different. Every market is going to be different. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind is they're using the jersey for generally new partnerships with the Oilers. That's not really the case at all. They've had a relationship with Play Alberta. But, um, again... To, like it's one thing to put an ad on the jersey, but it's another thing to you know uh, promote gambling at the same time. When at the same time gambling, uh, the stats are all over it. When it's uh, uh, it causes more harm than good. I mean, uh, a lot of you watching this video won't exactly agree with me. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the partnership or the dry saddle and McDavid. Um, Sort of that breakdown from Elliot Friedman there, but uh, yeah, sort of. I don't. I, I kind of you know prefaced it with a dark day in Oilers history, but I mean when you see that classic uniform with an advertisement on it, especially gambling, uh, it just leaves a leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Um, other than that, that's it for today's video. Have yourselves a fantastic day and a fantastic week, and we will be back tomorrow. I'm Matt. Take care.